Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's the Professional here. So uh, t today I have a channel update video for you guys and I want to wish everybody a happy new year and I thought it'd be a perfect time to make this video. And this video, you guys are going to see everything I'm saying straight from my heart. There's no script or anything. I'm going to be talking about a few things and I'm going to be thanking some of my moderators that you guys will see on the screen as well as people who who supported me through Patreon, um, super chatted me um, and supported me through super thanks. Thanks, channel memberships, and uh, and also some of my friends' channels that I'll have up on the screen. But basically, in this video, I wanted to talk about, you know, how YouTube essentially changed my life. Because it's kind of like a, a milestone video that I wanted to talk about. Because it's like, my life has been changed a lot years since, like, my YouTube channel started growing. And since it started picking up. And some of this that I'm going to say in this video, some of you guys might already know it, some of you guys might not know it, because I have talked about this before in my streams, and some of the things that have gone in, on in my life, and um, uh, YouTube has helped me out a lot greatly, but basically is, I, in the past, I wasn't very happy, like, in, when I say in the past, I'm talking more like seven, eight years ago, like around there, I wasn't very happy, I wouldn't say that I, I didn't have depression or anything like that, it wasn't like that, but I, I was just not in a good mood. I wasn't, like, pissed off at anybody or anything like that. But I just didn't know what I was going to do with my life. That was bas basically essentially what it was. Um, because I had, um, I had, I was going to college at the time. And I was also working in a retail job. And the retail job, I really didn't enjoy. You know, it was just, you know, I made some friends there and some people that I liked. But it was just, like, I just didn't want to deal with it. You know, it was just it was just annoying. The pay was terrible. It was, um, you know, I had customers that would just, you know, be so rude and nasty to me, curse me out, even when I helped them. And it was just that, that feeling, like, you just, you, just, you just really don't want to go to work. It's not, it's not that you're just lazy or something, but I just had that feeling, I just don't want to go to this job because it just, I just don't want to deal with the crap that I'm going to deal with. And, you know, I had some supervisors that were very nasty to me. I had my first manager... You know, he was just, you know, um, you know, an absolute scumbag to me. He was just an absolute scumbag to me. He told me that he talked to me about, like, um, a raise that I... He, he didn't guarantee me the raise, but he told me that he talked to me about the raise. And he said that, you know, we'll talk about it tomorrow, come in one day, uh, one hour before. And this was... Um, this was his second to last day because he was going to another store and this manager I ran around like crazy for him I would always come in whenever he needed my help always come in always was there and he told me you know come in tomorrow We'll talk about it stuff like that And it was because I had to stop him because he was rushing out that day and I wanted to talk to him But he just kept avoiding me and then the next day, you know, I came in and Basically, I was told that my boss had left and his his final day he took off so he took a sick day off I never saw him after that again. He went to a completely different store, but you know that's the type of stuff that I dealt with. My um, uh, the new manager that I got was actually a nice guy, you know, more understanding. But even though I I I had a much better boss, it was just that that environment that just I just I just didn't want to keep working in that environment. I was just unhappy. I ended up staying there for six years, which I kind of regretted it that I that I stayed there for that long. Um, so you know, I would say in my personal experience that like retail is like it's like a good place that. It's like a good place to start, maybe like a year or two, get your first job, but you don't want to stay there for long. It's just, it's not a good place to like, you know, build a career. And th they will constantly keep trying to promote you to like supervisor, uh, oftentimes. And oftentimes when they're trying to promote you to a supervisor, it can be a trap because what they'll do is they're going to give you maybe like a dollar, two dollar increase. And for that one dollar or two dollar increase, they are going to expect you to open and close the store, count the money. Um, deal with the registers, deal directly with the customer complaints, deal with corporate, um, do what, whatever tasks the manager assigns you in that day, you know, counting inventory. And, you know, why should somebody, you know, take that position as a supervisor making a little bit over minimum wage for just that much responsibility running an entire store without, you know, when the manager isn't there for just that terrible of a, of a pay? And it was also like, you know, going to the truck nights, which the truck nights were about once a week. I did most truck nights, and uh, truck nights were basically we would be out there, and the store that I worked at it didn't have the um, it didn't have like the best like ramp system to get the stuff in the store, so we had to use the front door instead of the back door, which is actually a bit annoying. And you know, there's some ridiculous things that happen on truck nights. Sometimes it wasn't that bad. Sometimes it was really bad. Like you'd be there from nine to ten p.m. all the way until like seven, eight 
sometimes 9 a.m. It was r rough shifts. And this was, you know, in when it was summertime, when it was really hot, or, you know, when it was really cold. And, you know, I remember one time I came into the parking lot, and when I came into the parking lot, it was, um, uh, I drove in the parking lot, truck was already there, and the truck was parked in a weird spot. It was, like, parked in the middle of the parking lot, and, like, all the boxes and all the product was just spilled all over the parking lot. And I was like, what the hell just happened? So I was talking to my supervisor, one of my supervisors, who was actually a good friend of mine, and I asked him, you know, what, what happened? And he said the truck driver didn't want to park, you know, in front of the store, he wanted to park and unload it here, and the boxes broke, the pallet snapped, and the whole thing just spilled out. And so I had to collect all the product that was in the parking lot, and some of it was spilled, it was disgusting, like shampoo and everything like that, you know, toothpaste. It was just, you know, it was just a mess to clean up. And then what, uh, what happened was he, uh, he was then bringing out a second pallet, and the second pallet, we, we told him not to bring it out like that, but he decided to bring it out instead, and we could tell the thing was going to snap, and instead, and the thing snapped. And it's everything spilled in the parking lot again, I had to clean it up, and after the second pallet snapped, the truck driver was like, okay, maybe I'll park it where you guys want me to park it now. And so it was like that, it was unloading these huge boxes all night long, you know, unloading these huge heavy boxes all night long, taking it all in the store, putting it on the shelf, you know, put it, sending all the overstock downstairs, which that was disgusting, because we had this belt that we actually had to open up. And, you know, it was like a re really big thing that you actually had to pull. Later on, there's like this little elevator thing that was like installed, which actually made it much easier. But it was that, it was that the, the original one, the original belt that we had in the store was like just really bad. And, you know, this was like gruesome work. Like you, it would be the dead of winter and you'd be sweating. Like, you know, the amount of, of labor that you had to do with this. So just doing that all night long, this huge shift, unpacking all of that, taking all the overstock downstairs, collecting all the boxes, taking it out. And sometimes we wouldn't even be able to finish, you know, bringing in the totes which that was just already itself was just so much. And so this, when I worked night shifts, I didn't get paid anything, you know, extra. There was no, there was no extra like um, uh, time and a half or anything. Even though I asked the manager, he asked, he, he was at least nice enough to ask the district manager, but the district manager refused. And I asked my manager, can you please ask the district manager, you know, what, what is the point of working the, the, the night shifts if, if we're not going to get paid time and a half? If we have to do this gruesome, like, you know, this work, like, you know, this, 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 you know, destroying our bodies, destroying our backs for just a little bit over minimum wage, you know, why, why should we do this? Why, why, should, why shouldn't we just work day shift then instead? To be fair, it was once a week the night shift, like I said, but it was like, like there were some people that didn't work the night shift, they just worked the day shifts, they just worked on the cash register, and I'm not saying the cash register wasn't necessarily an easy job, you know, I had to deal with a lot of stuff too on the register, but it was way easier than like working the truck nights. And so my manager asked the district manager, what's the point of working night shifts if you're getting the same pay as somebody that works in the cash register? The district manager told my uh, manager that, um, this is the second manager by the way, the nicer guy that came in, told my uh, manager that... The, the point of working a night shift is you get more hours. Really? You know, you get more hours, that's, that's their response. But that's basically summing up from work is uh, there's so much more stories that I can tell about my job in retail. I was there for six years. If you listen to m some of my streams, I talk about the horror of just working in that environment. And even though this was like a job that I had used to like to, um, to pay for college and like save up some money on the side, it was like I was ultimately, what I was honestly scared of, guys, is I was scared of that I would end up being there for like years and years and years because at, I was a very naive kid like I started working there when I was like 19 and I was very naive and when people told me to do something I would do it and I would just like not even question it and I would just run around do people constantly favors a lot of times people wouldn't return favors to me wouldn't help me out back in return even though I had helped them I did have some friends that did help me at the job don't get me wrong but there were some other really scummy people that took advantage of me and it was just I was just scared I was gonna be stuck there and I was scared that if I went to another job I wouldn't know how to do anything at that other job. That's what I was honestly scared of. I was scared of learning a whole new job and just learning skills again. And I was scared that the, the management at the other store or another place, wherever else I worked, another job, that they'd yell at me. And so that was like, you know, that's one of the reasons I ended up staying there for so long. As for like my time in college, how that was is I always had, you know, generally good grades. I did well in college. But my issue with college is I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know. And I had done a liberal arts degree. I did a liberal arts degree, then I did an undeclared major. And then what I did was I had, I tried to go into the history program. History program got canceled because it wasn't popular enough. And so I, I do like history a lot. And I ended up doing business. I did business for a, a bit. I did accounting. I really didn't like that. You'd think that somebody like me that like, you know, talks about all these businesses in GT Online would like courses like that, but I didn't. I just didn't enjoy it. Um, uh, I don't mind like business in real life. But it's like, I just didn't enjoy the courses. I just didn't, I didn't like it. It was, it just wasn't for me. I, I understood the material. I did. 
but I just personally found it like really boring and I didn't think it was like it was necessary. And so then what I ended up doing is I ended up doing law, law enforcement um, technology, which that's ultimately what I graduated in, I graduated in a bachelor's in law enforcement technology. I've always been kind of interested in law and I wanted to do law and I ended up graduating in that. And, uh, and what happened is around the same time that, you know, this is like around 2017 is when my YouTube channel started picking up. So beforehand, I kind of started out my channels like a Star Wars channel. I didn't really, I didn't really like, um, I didn't really do much on my channel. I, I kind of had like crappy videos. Like a lot of my videos were, you know, poorly edited. It was just something that I would just upload videos just for fun at times. That, that was just it. And I didn't, I didn't really enjoy, you know, um, I didn't really enjoy, uh, you know, my time, right? I, I would say I had some fun making the videos, but it was just that that oftentimes, like you know, I would stream for like hours and hours and hours, and it was like I was just really hoping that I would get like you know a few viewers, and sometimes I would get like one or two viewers, but I unfortunately didn't happen, and it, you know, kind of got me down and stuff like that. But even when I was like you know streaming at times, like this is you know my channel had like under a hundred subs, right? When I was streaming, when I had like under a hundred subs. I had, um, I would have, I would have, like, you know, one or two people show up, and they would comment, and even those one or two people that show up, I was so grateful for that, and I was so happy for that, because I, I knew that somebody was watching my channel, and that, you know, somebody was stopping by, even if it was only for, like, you know, a minute or two, but, you know, it did get me, like, you know, it did get me upset when it was, like, for hours and hours, and, like, you know, nobody would even show up, um, you know, that happened at times, but I would only do YouTube as something for fun on the side, and I was always really good at GTA Online. So even before, like, my YouTube, you know, channel blew up, I was always really good at GTA Online. Like, when I say I'm really good at GTA Online, I'm not talking about PvP. PvP, I'm, like, average. But when I say I'm good at GTA Online, I'm, I say I'm good with the vehicles. I know a lot of the vehicles well. I knew the uh, businesses really well at the time, 2017. I knew how to make money from the businesses. I already had plenty of money before my channel, uh, you know, picked up on, um, uh, on YouTube. And what happened was when Gunrunning, that's the update that kind of made my channel, when the Gunrunning update came out in June of 2017, I had, I had done a, a, a series of videos on it. I did a bunker video. I did, um, uh, you know, I did videos on the raids. Um, you know, I did videos on the new vehicles like the APC SAM and stuff like that. And they weren't like the best edited videos, but they were, you know, a little bit better than what I typically did. And they blew up in views. Like, I had gotten at most, I would get at most, like, maybe 100 views on, like, you know, previous videos. That was, like, max that I would typically get. And then all of a sudden, I was getting, like, thousands and thousands of views on, like, my uh, my gun running videos. And I was, like, I was just really surprised by that because that had never happened. I'd never had views like that. And there were so many people that were, like, you know, coming to my channel. And what happened was I... um uh, I, I, I looked at the comments and people were like really liking my gun running videos. Like they were saying, can you make more of this? Can you make guides? Like, and people would like say, like, oh, how do you have so much money? Can you please explain and stuff like that? And I was like, okay. And so I started making like in more guides. I started making uh, videos explaining how to make money in the game. And that's essentially how my channel took off because the, at the time there really wasn't that many people that talked about how to make money on GT Online. This is you know, 2017. GT Online was still pretty popular back then, but you didn't really have that many YouTubers that talked about how to make money. And so I guess I was one of those few YouTubers. And it, what here's what a lot of YouTubers won't tell you guys. What a lot of YouTubers won't tell you is that when it comes to growing a YouTube channel, it takes both luck and skill. That's what it takes. And I would say that it's like 60 or 70% skill and like 30 or 40% luck. And what I mean by the, the skill part is the skill part is putting these videos together, putting good videos out, out. The luck part is getting recognized by the algorithm because you can make the most detailed, best videos ever, but your videos are going to suffer if they don't get recommended by the algorithm. So when YouTubers tell you that it's all skill, it's not necessarily all true. There is more skill involved than luck, but it also takes um, a luck to be recognized by the algorithm and to start, you know, having your videos pick up. Because I was lucky the algorithm found my channel. If the algorithm hadn't found my channel, I don't know, you know, where I would be at this point right now. I don't know what I would be doing. Um, but I was lucky for that. But the skill afterwards is because even after the algorithm recognizes your channel, you now have subscribers subscribing to you and you have like a viewership that's building. And then when you upload more videos, some of those viewers will also watch that video. And the more views a video has, typically the more chances that the algorithm will recognize it, that will happen. So uh, the point that I'm getting at is it takes skill to make a good video, but it's also luck on getting recognized by the algorithm. And what happens is uh, 
once once you get that viewership, it takes more skill at that point because the luck was initially getting recommended by the algorithm. But what happens at that point is it's the skill is to retain the, those viewers. It's to make content that's going to keep those viewers coming back to you and keep those and make more viewers watch you at that point when you start building a base. So there's both skill and luck involved in this. Uh, but that was it. I started you know growing on it and um, and I started making some money on YouTube. And I was still, you know, making more money from my retail job, but I was making, you know, I was making, I was starting to make some money on YouTube. Um, you know, I was, I was starting to make like a few hundred dollars, you know, here and there, like every month. And it was like, and it was, it was helping me out, with like, you know, groceries and bills and stuff like that. This is at the time I still lived with like my parents in like 2017, but I did always, a lot of times pay for my food, help my parents out with stuff like that. And so this was like, this was helping me out a lot. And, uh, and what happened was in 2018, my channel, like, really took off with the Nightclub DLC. Like, Nightclub DLC really took off. The Doomsday Heist kind of helped me grow, too, but Nightclub DLC really helped me. Like, I got really popular in the Nightclub DLC. Like, Nightclub, um, uh, in the Nightclub, um, the, what was that, July of 2018, I got, like, 40,000 subscribers in, like, one month, I think it was, or 40 or 30,000 subscribers in, like, one. That was insane. I had never gotten something like that before, and I was just so happy with myself. I was just so happy with the, the progress that I had made. But I'll tell you this, though, guys, is um, uh, I was growing and I was really happy at, 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 at the, amount, uh, the amount of subscribers I was getting, the amount of views that I was getting. I was really happy. But then there was another thing that kind of like, it kind of like, I don't know what the word that I would use. It, it kind of like, I'm, I'm not going to use the word depressed because I was never depressed, but it kind of like, you know, put me in like a down mood, kind of like shot me down in a way. And what, what happened? What was that thing that put me in, like, a down mood? Even though I was getting a lot of views and a lot of subscribers and I was doing really well, what happened was I was getting kind of, uh, you know, bored with just doing just constantly GTA Online. Like, I know that GTA Online was, you know, you know my bread and butter, and that was where, you know, my channel was growing, and I was getting, like, a lot of views and attention and subscribers from that. But I wanted to play some other games because I was really good at Battlefield 1. Like, Battlefield 1 was one game that I was really good at. Like, Battlefield 1 is, like, my favorite Battlefield game, because I just like the World War One setting a lot, and I was really good at Battlefield 1. I was really, really good at the game. And so, I, like, Battlefield 1, I was excellent at PvP. Like, everything. Sniping, machine gunning, driving tanks, uh, planes. I was really good at that. And, you know, I would, some, some, some of the matches that I played in Battlefield 1, I would end with, like, 100-something kills in, like, operations. Like, at the top of the scoreboard. I was, I was really good. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I'm saying I was, I was I'm, it's, like, one of the best games I was ever at was Battlefield 1. And so I started trying to do some Battlefield 1 videos and stuff like that. And I thought that if I fought, I thought that if I made guides on GTA and people liked my guides on GTA, that they would also like my guides on Battlefield 1 if I explained things and how to, how, to, how to do things like that. And what happened was I remember that when, when I did, when I used to do GTA streams in like 2017 and 2018, right? They would get like 200 viewers regularly, like average, like most of the time, like 200 viewers for like hours. So it would be, it would be around two, between the 200 to 300 viewers for like hours. And so what happened was uh, I had decided to do a Battlefield 1 stream one day. And my GTA streams would like have like 200 or 300 viewers at a time. And then my Battlefield 1 stream had like, you know, 10 viewers. And I was, like, a bit confused by that. I was, like, I didn't understand why that was happening exactly. I was, like, thinking to myself, I was, like, is there a glitch with the algorithm or something? Or is it, is it like, not recommending? But the reality of it is I found out that pe the video was getting recommended. People were getting notifications for that. It's just that people weren't interested in my other content. They weren't interested in my Battlefield 1 content. And that kind of got me really down because I love Battlefield 1. And I thought that people would like to watch me play Battlefield 1 just as much as they, they like to watch me play GT Online. And what got me even more down than that was that the 10 viewers that were there watching the Battlefield 1 stream weren't even really there to to watch the Battlefield 1 stream or watch me play Battlefield 1. They were just commenting, when are you going to play GTA or when is the next GTA video? And I'll never forget this. There was one comment that really, like, you know, got to me. It really got to me. And I, and, and, and it was just, this is before I had a filter on because I, I, um, I put on a filter afterwards, which, you know, the filter on YouTube is actually pretty good. It actually gets rid of most of the profane comments. But there was one comment that I, I never forget. I'd gotten in on a Battlefield stream. This is like many years ago. But it was when my channel started growing on GTA. And the guy in the in the comment, he said, I subscribe to this channel for GTA, not Battlefield BS. Play GTA right blank now or I'm going to blank unsubscribe. That's what one guy said to me. And I was so shocked when I saw that comment. Because I was think I was like, I couldn't believe that somebody was going to get so angry at me because I just played a different game. 
because I did so many GT Online videos and so many GT Online streams, and then I do one different a video on a different game, and this you know this guy comes to my channel and just gets all upset at me and starts cursing at me for what? It's because I play a different game on my own channel, but that was like that really got to me and that really did bother me. And it was just, um, you know, after that, I kind of like, I basically kind of gave into those comments. And there was like, there was other comments that weren't as nasty, but there was like people that were, you know, complaining. Like whenever, whenever I would do like, like, it was just, it was just that if I did like four GTA Online videos in like a week, four GTA videos in a week, and I did like two GTA streams in a week, and then I did like one non GTA Online video, people would still complain. They would complain. They'd be like, "Where's the GT Online video? I don't want to watch this, even if the video was good. That it wasn't like a, a, a it wasn't a GT Online video." And I was like thinking to myself, like, "Why are some of these people getting so upset?" I know the majority of people were cool, but I was like, "Like, why are they getting so upset? If you don't want to watch the video, just don't watch it. Only watch the GTA content. No one's forcing you to click on my other, like, you know, on my other, you know, videos, non GTA videos. But these people would like, you know." come to my non-GTA videos and they would just complain and say, play GTA, I don't want to see this game, play GTA, I'm going to unsubscribe. And what happened was, and I'll tell you this, guys, I had a friend who, uh, she's in psychology, and, um, and what happened was, is I had asked her once, like, you know, why are they, why are some of these people so upset? Like, why are they complaining? Like, when I'm, when I'm, I post multiple GTA videos. When I post multiple GTA videos in like a week, why are they complaining on like the non GTA videos? They still want to see more GTA videos, and they're telling me don't play this, or they're gonna, or they're gonna unsubscribe. Like, why, why are some people being so hostile to me? And my friend told me that the way that they see it is they see it if you have some free time, why are you playing other games instead of playing GTA? That's the way they see it, and you know that it was, it was, it was I guess my friend was right on that. And what happened was, um, when Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, uh, I was, I was posting, like, you know, I was posting and saying that when Red Dead Redemption 2 comes out, I'll play this game, and I'll do a, I'll do playthrough of it, I'll play the online, definitely, and I wanted to do guides for the Red Dead Online, just like I did for GTA Online, because I played Red Dead Redemption 1, and I love the Red Dead world, I, I really did like it, and so I told people, I said, you know, I'm going to be playing Red Dead Redemption 2 when that comes out. I didn't really get much of a response, not neither positive nor negative. Um, uh, it was just kind of a neutral response. And what happened was, the moment that I posted Red Dead Redemption 2, like I posted it, like, people were posting ridiculous comments on my Red Dead videos. They're like, rest in peace to this channel. They're like, this channel is done. This channel has become like a garbage Red Dead channel. Like, this game sucks. All you do is you drive around on your horse. Like, this game is boring. There's no automatic weapons. These are all real comments that I'm saying to you guys. Like, I saw comments like this. And these weren't just a few. They were spam. There was tons of these comments. And my Red Dead videos were getting mass disliked. Like, people were just mass disliking my Red Dead videos. And I didn't... I, I didn't understand why. There was nothing wrong with my Red Dead videos. If you watch some of my earlier Red Dead videos, like from 2018, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, you know, I have no problem with somebody, like, disliking one of my videos. But the only thing that I ask is that if you dislike one of my videos, you just leave a comment and tell me why you disliked it, just so I can improve in the future. But if your main reason for disliking, like, a video is just because it's not the game that you wanted to see, is that really, like, a, a justified reason to, like, dislike a video? But it was just... It was bad. It was like, it was people, people were harassing me really badly on the Red Dead videos, and they were being very toxic, and they were very, some of them were being very aggressive and mean to me. And it was that, I'll tell you this, I, um, uh, when it came to the Red Dead content, I was doing still the same amount of GTA videos that I had done. And there was these people that were spreading these false, you know, rumors on my channel that were just not true at the time in 2018. And they were saying, they were essentially saying to me that, oh, I remember when the professional would do like a GTA Online video every single day and stuff like that. Or, you know, I remember when he did like this, G a money guide every day and stuff like that. That didn't happen. I didn't release a money guide every day. It was never like that. But there was people that were, you know, making up this stuff saying I used to release money guides every day. That didn't happen. It was a money guide I would release like, you know, every, you know, maybe every two weeks, every month like every so often, but it wasn't something that I definitely didn't release every day. And so I had a tight schedule. And my tight schedule, how basically I did things, is I would I would stream um, Red Dead, it was on Fridays. It was on, back in the day, it was Fridays. And I would stream GTA on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's what it was, was Sundays and Wednesdays, I believe. And then what would happen is Saturday, I would always upload a GTA video. So Saturdays, there would always be a G GTA video, 
and Sundays and Wednesdays GTA stream, and Re Red Dead Fridays was a Red Dead stream, and also Saturday was a Red Dead video. So basically, Wednesday was a G GTA stream, Friday was a Red Dead stream, Saturday was a um, Red Dead and a GTA video, and then Sunday was a GTA stream. So two GTA streams and a GTA stream, a GTA video every week. And it, also I was doing a Red Dead stream and a Red Dead video every, every week. And what happened was, I was still doing the exact same amount of GTA content that I was doing before I started doing the Red Dead content. It was no difference. It was the exact same. At the time, it was still the exact same amount of GTA content. I still kept that schedule. And yet people were coming to the Red Dead videos and just mass disliking it. And they were saying like, oh, this is interfering with your GTA content and stuff like that. Like, I want to see more GTA content. And I was like, I'm doing still the same amount of GTA content. This content is just extra. But a lot of these people didn't seem to understand that. And they were just mass disliking my videos. They're like, I don't want to see this boring cowboy game play GTA Online. And at that point, like, I was like, I was literally like almost about to be done. I was almost about to be done. And then I remember like, it was like, you know, in May of 2019, so this is like, you know, half a year later after Red Dead had come out, you know, May of 2019, I was playing Sniper Elite V2 Remastered, which I actually played recently. And when I played Sniper Elite V2 Remastered, um, it was actually, Sniper Elite V2 was like one of my favorite games. I used to play it in 2012, I used to play it a lot back in the day, I was really good at it. And again, I had the same people like, you know, coming to the videos, disliking the Sniper Elite uh, videos, just being nasty in the comments. And, um, and at that point, like, I remember there was, like, there was, like, one guy who, he left a comment on one of my Sniper Elite V2 videos. I think it was the church mission. Pretty sure it was the St. Olibaris Church, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It was the night church mission in Sniper Elite V2. So, he left a comment on that saying, you better play GT Online or I'm gonna unsubscribe. If you post this game again, I'm gonna unsubscribe. And at that point, I, you know, I had enough, really. And I had taken a stand. And I had said, I replied to him. And I said to him, you know, I am going to play this game. I'm still posting GT Online content, but I'm going to play this game. If you want to unsubscribe, go ahead. I can't stop you. I'd hate to see anybody go, but I'm going to play this game. I like this game, and you're not going to tell me what game I can and can't play on my channel. You know how the guy reacted? He responded, replied back to me quickly, and he said to me something like, I've been subscribed for two years or something like that. And I, and I, what my response to him was basically, okay, like, you know... You've been subscribed for two years. I appreciate the support, but you're the one that's coming in here and trying to dictate to me what videos I can and can't make. I'm sad, sad to see anybody go, but I'm not going to be told what game I can and can't play. If you want to unsubscribe, that's ultimately your choice. I can't stop you. But I, your, your comment, you know, threatening to unsubscribe from me is not going to, you know, change my mind on this. And this is what a lot of these people didn't understand. They would just they would just, free the, and I'm not the only channel that goes through this, guys. There's a lot of other channels that, when they're basically, fo they're, when they're basically set up on just one type of, of, when they're one type of game, like Call of Duty or GTA, and then they try to differentiate from that, and they try to play like a different game, some of their audience reacts very negatively to that, and will start threatening to unsubscribe, insulting them, you know, being nasty to them, and, you know, really for what? Just because the YouTuber wants to try something different, or, you know, play a different game? And so what happened was, a few days later, that exact same guy commented on one of my Sniper Elite videos. And he said, like, oh, this game is really cool. Can you please upload more? I don't know if this is troll or not, but I replied to him. I remembered him and I said to him, I thought you said you were going to unsubscribe and you didn't want to see this game. You're, you like this game now all of a sudden? And he replied back to me and he said to me that, oh, well, I didn't get a chance to watch the video. I didn't watch the video. I just, I started watching it. You're actually pretty good at this game. The x-ray kill cams are really cool in this game. Can you please play more? And I was like thinking to myself like this, I was like, I was like thinking to myself, really? Like I didn't respond to him after that, but I was thinking to myself, if you actually gave the game a chance, instead of coming in with this extremely biased view that you just wanted to see GTA, if you actually maybe watched the game a little bit before you actually made those negative comments, maybe you would have liked the game and you, you wouldn't have had this whole, you know, interaction with me in the first place. But that's the problem is that so many people, they don't want to give anything else a chance and they just want to, they just want to see just one type of content. And then when a YouTuber branches out or they try to do a different type of content, some of the audience will get really nasty with them and get really negative with them. And that's what happened to me. And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that viewers are obligated to watch every video. I'm not saying that by any means. I'm subscribed to plenty of channels which I don't watch their content. What I'm saying is, you know, don't harass a YouTuber or be mean to them just because they're trying to do something different on their channel. When I subscribe to somebody personally, they earn my subscription for life. So 
if it, there was YouTube, some channels that I subscribe to that don't even do the content they, that I subscribed to them originally from, but I don't just unsubscribe from them just because they do different stuff. I keep my subscription because they've earned my respect. I like that person. I generally want to see them happy. Like one channel I subscribed to a long time ago, years ago, is Tagback TV. Tagback TV did Red Dead content mostly. And when he did, uh, you know, a Red Dead content, he, during the pandemic, he got, you know, bored of the Red Dead content, and he wanted to try something new. He started doing Animal Crossing, other games, and he got really popular on that. And I don't care at all for Animal Crossing. I'm not a fan of the game. I don't hate it, but I just don't care for the game. But even though I wasn't interested in the Animal Crossing content at all, I never unsubscribed for him. And I, sometimes I came by to, to his streams, and I said hi to him and stuff like that, but I was never mean or nasty to him, and I, was hap and I was happy for him because I could see that even though I didn't enjoy the game particularly that he was playing, I could tell he was really into it, and he really liked the game. And his Animal Crossing videos were just blowing up in views. Like, they were getting, they were getting really popular. They were doing really well. So that, that's, you know, kind of, you know, what I'm getting at here is that, you know, you basically let YouTubers do what they want to do and, you know, don't be nasty to them. And what basically happened at that point is that in 2019, I was really close to, like, stopping YouTube entirely. Like, I was really close to it because at that point, YouTube was doing better for me than my job in retail. And I was working my job in retail and going to college. So I was doing three things at once. But the, the reason that I was going to stop YouTube... It, it, even though I was doing good on it and I was growing and I was getting like a lot of like subscribers, the reason that I considered stopping YouTube is because it was just like, it was just kind of like damaging me in a way. Now it's not, it's not, it's, it's you know, YouTube is beneficial for me, it's helping me. But what, what it was hurting me with was just that I felt personally like I was trapped in this box and this box was just all GT Online and I couldn't get out of this box. I felt like I was trapped in this endless box and I was just doomed to just do GT Online content and nothing but GT Online content. And for the people that tell you that I hate GT Online, it's not true. It's not, I'm telling you. I love GT Online. It's one of my favorite games ever. Like, it, it really is. I have over one year of 460-something days played. I have a year of my life on that game. So I wouldn't have spent that much time in the game if I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed the game. There are some things that honestly piss me off, like the Oppressor Mark II and the Orbital Cannon. That is true. But just because there's some things that I don't like about the game doesn't mean that I hate the game overall. I enjoy the game. I enjoy playing it. My problem with GT Online at the time was I was burnt out. I was doing GT Online and just GT Online. And I didn't want to, And I, I felt like whenever I tried to do something else when I tried to do another game, that I would have these group of people that would just show up to the videos and they would just mass dislike it and just say nasty things to me, curse me out, you know, threaten to unsubscribe, simply because I did something else. And that just, it, it just, it just got to me. And I was, it was at the point where I was like, I'm just going to stop YouTube entirely. Like I was just thinking to myself at the time, don't worry, I have no plans to stop YouTube now. But it was just that at the time, like in 2019, I was thinking like, Maybe I'll just stop this entirely. Like, I wasn't gonna delete the channel or something like that. But I was thinking, like, maybe I'll just stop this entirely because it's like it's like people only want to see GT Online content. I don't feel like constantly doing GT Online content. And whenever I try to do something else, people will lash out at me. I know there was people that were supporting me that you know came to those videos and they did have my back. I do appreciate that. But it was just seeing all those spam comments, it's just those comments harassing me. And if you're one of my viewers from like years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know the comments, you've seen them of people being nasty to me when I try to, you know change up my content. And so I was about to be done, really, at that point. And what ha what finally changed my mind, what finally changed my mind on it, and, you know, encouraged me to actually do something different, was when Ghost of Tsushima came out. So Ghost of Tsushima, I keep pronouncing the island wrong, but it's the open world, you know, game where you play as Jin and you're, you know, fighting the Mongolians. Um, that game, Ghost of Tsushima, was like my favorite game in years. It was truly my favorite game in years. It really was. I really did enjoy that game. I had a lot of fun with it. And what happened was when I, I was I streamed the whole game from start to finish. I have the whole playthrough in a playlist if you want to watch it. But I streamed the whole game from start to finish. And when I streamed that game, I was having so much fun into it. You could watch my streams. You could tell that I was really into it. I was really having fun with it. And I was really into it. It was a, such a great story. The combat was good, and it wasn't getting. It was only getting like a fraction of the views that GT Online content was getting. But even though it was getting only like a fraction of views, that didn't matter to me. It was because I wanted to play this game, and I had some of those people show up and just demand GTA content, but I didn't give in to it. And I just said, I'm going to play Ghost of Tsushima because I feel like playing Ghost of Tsushima, and this is what I want to do. I want to do Ghost of Tsushima, and so I'm going to play this game. And I just kept playing it, and I had fun. And I said to myself, you know what, this is what I'm going to do in the future. This is, this is the direction I'm going to take my channel. So that's 2020, that's, you know, 
you know, three years later at this point, almost three years later, the channel is very different from what it was three years ago, because three years ago is like, you know, exclusively almost GTA content. I had some Red Dead guides and some Red Dead content that I would do, but it was mostly like, you know, GTA content. And so at that point, I said to myself, you know what, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I want to do. I'm gonna play what game I want to play, and I'm gonna do playthroughs of these games, and regardless of what people say to me, if people are nasty to me, I'm still gonna do what I want to do, because I know I'll have people that support me and still like my content, and that's that's ultimately what had happened with um with that. That's how I decided to change my channel around. And I wanted to, you know, address another thing with it. Another another reason that I didn't do con I didn't do as much content other than GTA online. It wasn't just because of the the comments, the, the nasty comments, the harassment, but it was also because of the view counts. That was also another reason for it. The GTA online videos would like blow up in views. And then like I would have like a video that I would put out in, in GTA Online, it would get like a hundred thousand views within like a few days. But then I would put out like a, you know, another video, Red Dead video or a Sniper Elite video, and would maybe get what five to ten thousand views in, in a few days, which is still really good. Don't get me wrong, but it was only a fraction of compared to GTA Online uh, content. And what I'll tell you guys is, and this is what I don't think I don't think a lot of YouTubers personally talk about this. This is this is how burnout basically happens. Is you you do the same content over and over and over again and you do the same content because you want to keep the majority of your subscribers happy but you also do the, the same content because you want to keep those high views and you want to keep those high subscribers and you want to keep those high um, views coming in and your channel is just growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger but at the same time as you're trapped on doing that one content this is why i say that i don't recommend doing channels based on one game for this reason because doing a channel based on one game you'll build an audience really quickly but then it's really hard to grow out of that and try to do something else because your other content isn't going to get as much views and I, I don't blame the viewers you know for this you know you know i know there are, I, know, I know there's people that are not interested in the other content but if you build your entire audience based on just one type of content then it's going to be very hard for you to grow into your other content because your viewers might not be as willing to check out the other content as they are as your regular content i'm not just talking about gta this happens to call of duty channels as a lot i've watched some call of duty channels that i've seen from severe burnout. Like, I've seen Call of Duty channels that, like, they just do Call of Duty and Call of Duty and nothing but Call of Duty, and you can tell from their videos. Their videos are getting worse over time. They're getting the same amount of views. They're still getting a lot of views, but you can just tell from the tone of their voice they're not enjoying what they're doing anymore. They, they clearly want to play other games. But so why don't YouTubers play other games if they want to play other games? The reason for that is because they feel, like I said, it's this box. You feel like you're trapped in this box, and you feel like you can't get out of this box. You feel like your subscribers are going to get pissed off at you. You feel like a lot of people are going to unsubscri unsubscribe from you. You feel like you're not going to get the same viewership that you're going to get. And so that's what they're ultimately scared of. They're scared of losing a ton of views, and they're scared of, you know, losing a, a lot of subscribers. I don't blame them to an extent. I used to be just like this. But um, what I'll say about this is, and I'm not telling anybody what to do on their channel. They can do what they want to do on their channel, but I'm just telling you from my perspective, you know, why I did what I did and what I went through. It was that this, this obsession with views, because a lot of YouTubers have this obsession with views, and this, this both clickbait and good YouTubers have obsession with views. So a lot of people have obsession with views, even if you're a good quality YouTuber or you're a bad quality YouTuber. You know, a lot of YouTubers have this obsession with views. And I'll tell you guys this, I used to have this too. I used to have this obsession with views. And it's almost like a disease on your head, in your head in a way, in the way you're thinking. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just toxic. It's just, it's, it's, it's this bad line of thinking. Like, it gets to you. It's just, it's just, it just, it kind of ruins your mental health. Because how it, how it basically works, how a lot of YouTubers look at this, you know how a lot of YouTubers look at this? Tell you. Is that you... Put out a video, right? And you're watching that video. Like every hour, you're just looking at your phone. You're just you know constantly going back to your phone. You're checking, like checking what is the video at right now? How many likes does it have? How many dislikes does it have? And you're constantly going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you basically a, a lot of YouTubers have like a time frame in their mind. And that time frame is how much they expect the video to generate in that time. And in, in that YouTuber's mind, if that video does not get to that specific amount of views within that time set, they then think that the video is a failure. So if, if the video doesn't get like 50,000 views or something like that, like in their mind, within 48 hours, they think it's a failure. They think that just because a video gets a specific amount of views, they think that it's a failure. I used to be like that too. I used to think like, you know, if I put out a video, I was like, I was thinking, oh, this video has to get this many views within this amount of time. If it doesn't, it's, it's going to be a failure. But you know, what I, what I learned over time is that some of the best videos on YouTube are basically like an investment. They grow over time. And so a lot of these YouTubers, they don't have the patience for it. They just think, they look at the views within the first few days, but they don't think about the views within months or even years from now. And some of the best videos 
on YouTube are videos that grow over time, not videos that get tons of views within, you know, the first few days. Like, for instance, when I started getting away from, you know, GT Online, I didn't t take a break from GT Online. I didn't take a break because I hated GT Online, but I took a break because I needed to, because I was burnt out of the game. I played the game way too much. I did so many money guides, so many top fives. I needed to play something else, and I wanted to do playthroughs. There's plenty of other games that I like. And so one way that I felt that I could keep my audience happy but still try to do something different is to play the classic GTA. So it's still GTA, but it's, it's not GTA Online, so it's not going to give me a burnout. And so when I play these classic GTAs, I did like playthroughs of them and stuff like that. And what I started doing is I started dressing up as the characters. Like I dress up as CJ, you know, you guys saw my green, you know, sweater. I dress up as Claude with his black jacket. I dress up as Tony Cipriani, black suit, you know, a white business shirt. Nico, I dress up as Luis, Johnny. So over the next few years, I did tons of playthroughs. And in those playthroughs, I thought of doing something different. I thought of, why don't I dress up as the characters? I was thinking because there's a lot of YouTube channels that, that do playthroughs out there. And I was thinking, I got to expand my channel into something else. I gotta try to do something different. And so I wanted to do playthroughs, but I was thinking, how can I make my playthroughs different from other other YouTubers? Like, what can I do different? And I was thinking, why don't I dress up as a characters? Almost nobody else does that. And so that was like, um, that was like a very unique thing for me. And people know, know me for that right now. They know me that it's like some people, like they know me just from the playthroughs. Like I have gotten thousands of su subscribers from these playthroughs. Like you will have people that will hate on me and they'll come to my channel and they'll say like, oh, the professional gets like only a fraction of the views that he used to get. But these people would be surprised at the amount of subscribers that I actually get from some of these playthroughs. Like I, there's a lot of subscribers that I've gotten from these playthroughs over time. And a lot of these playthroughs don't even have to do with GTA. Like they're, the Saints Row playthroughs, like Saints Row 1 and 2, have gotten me thousands of subscribers alone from those, those playthroughs. And so a lot of these people have like subscribed to me over time and they know me as being that guy that does playthroughs, dresses up. Some people know me as the GTA money guide guy, um, but I didn't want to just be known as one thing. I wanted to be known as a channel that does multiple things. I want to do ultimately what makes me happy, and this is what makes me happy. And sometimes, sometimes you have to take risks. That's sometimes what you have to do. A lot of people don't want to do that, but sometimes you got to take risks because you got to follow what you want to do. Because if I did just GT Online, sure, I maybe I would probably have more viewers than I have now. I'd probably have more subscribers than I have now. But would I be happy? I don't know, not necessarily. Because I was able to take a break from GTA Online, and I and I, I did like come back to the updates and I covered them because I generally enjoyed when they added new content, but because I was able to take a break from it, and when the Criminal Enterprises DLC came out in July, um, uh, July of 2022, that's when I really got back into GTA Online. Like, and I, I don't do as much as I used to do in the past, but I still do like regular GTA Online videos. I do s streams every Sundays, and it was because I could sell an invite-only sessions, and I what I liked about Criminal Enterprises is Criminal Enterprise is my favorite DLC this year. I liked it more than Drug Wars. The reason for that was because, or I should say last year, because it's 2023 now, but the reason I like Criminal Enterprises is because it added something to all the previous businesses, MCs, CEOs, um, uh, Bunker, Nightclub. It added something to the businesses. It, it refined them. It added something more over time. And that's ultimately what I liked about it. It added something new to all of the other stuff. And I was able to get back into it because these, these are businesses that I used to grind like crazy. And now with new things to each business, that really got me back in the game. And with being able to play in private sessions and being able to stream and not having some idiot, you know, follow me around, you know, lobby to lobby and just like, um, you know, harass me. Like, you know, that um, that was just a relief because I used to have people that would just join my sessions and I was never a toxic guy. You know, I would just, um, you know, I, I just did streams. I did money guides to help people out. Uh, some people didn't like that I criticized the Oppressor Mark II or that I criticized PvP and GT Online, but I never harassed anyone. I was never toxic towards everyone. I never bothered anyone specifically. And these people would just come into my streams and they would just harass me. Like they would send friend requests to my friends and they would say, oh, hey, I'm a friend of the professional. This is like back in the day. And they would just do that just so they could get in the session, orbital cannon me. Like you guys, if you guys, you guys seen the old streams, you know what I'm talking about. The, the, the toxicity was like really high. Even though I'm not a toxic guy, my streams would get really toxic at times because it's just the people that would just come in and just try to ruin the streams. And it, it and with being able to sell an invite only lobby, so you know, playing in friend sessions, that toxicity is gone. It's virtually gone now. So I can play, I can chill, I can read comments, and that's that's ultimately that. It's um. Uh, you know, I've been I've been having a lot of fun, you know, getting back into it. But I ultimately like that I'm that I'm you know doing what I what I want to do, and that I'm playing a lot of different games, and I'm even doing the crazy current events videos. I have a crazy current events video coming out tomorrow, but it's like where I react to like random you know crazy stuff that goes on. I give my opinion while I'm playing a video game in the background. People like that, you know. People like my commentary on games, you know. They um uh 
they like uh, they like how I um uh, how I point things out because if you ever watch my commentaries uh, like my commentaries when I do playthroughs like that guys I will be honest like people people a lot of I've seen a lot of comments on my channel and this one regular comment that I see is people say to me regularly you don't laugh a lot you're not funny like you know stuff like that like I see I see comments like that and my response to that is that it is true I don't laugh a lot, at least compared to the to uh, most other people. I don't laugh a lot. That is true. I don't shy away from that. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't. Um, uh, I don't. You know, make jokes or anything like that. And you're probably wondering why. Why don't you laugh a lot? Why don't you make jokes? I'm not depressed or anything like that. This is just my personality. This is the person that I am. Uh, because I I have always been the person that I am. Always. Like, you know, I don't put on a personality. I don't do that. If I put on a personality, if I started being funny, if I started cracking jokes every few minutes, would I get more views? Would I get more subscribers? Possibly. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't, I don't do stuff like that. I would rather have less views and less subscribers and pe pe people know my real personality and like me as who I am than, you know, have like, you know, more subscribers putting on a fake personality or people hating my guts for doing some garbage like clickbaiting. So it's like, I'd rather, you know, have less views, be honest about my channel content, don't put on a personality, don't clickbait, and just people like me as a person, enjoy enjoy my content and support me. And sometimes when I go back to my videos like years later and I look at the comments and people like, you know, are still watching them it, it, and it, it, it makes me happy knowing that people enjoy my content from years ago and people are still finding it. Like my send up, like when I started doing my lore videos, when I started doing my lore videos, like they really, um, uh, they really did take off. They got really popular. Like my big smoke video that I made like a year and a half ago, like the big smoke video is like approaching 5 million views and it's about to be my most popular video ever and it's just you know people were just um uh, a lot of people were shocked that the video grew so much but it was like some of these videos are like an investment like i say they take time to grow and you can't you can't think about this this view mindset that you're, you're this obsession with views because i'm telling you it's unhealthy it's not good for you having this crazy obsession with views not good it is it is not good it's just thinking everything about views you have to also do what you want to do sometimes other content might not get as much views but you're attracting a wider audience by doing so and going back to why i don't why i don't laugh it's like i said this is my personality this is who i am there there are things that i'm not going to that i find funny and when i find certain things funny i'll laugh sure i will but then if I don't find something funny, I, I won't laugh. Like people like people sometimes say, why didn't you laugh at this? This is funny or something like that. I didn't find it funny. So it's like I'm not going to pretend to laugh or, or something like that. I'm only going to laugh at something that I truly find funny and that I truly en uh, enjoy. So if I don't find something funny, I'm not going to laugh. So some people might say you're not funny. I'm not trying to be funny. Some people might say you're boring. Okay, that's your, that's your opinion. But it is, this is this is who I am. This is this is this is my personality. I'm gonna be who I truly am. I'm not gonna pretend to be somebody or not, or just making jokes. And honestly, me, I can't speak for for other people. But when I watch other YouTubers and they're constantly laughing or they're constantly making stupid jokes every few minutes, I can't watch that. It annoys the hell out of me personally. So that's 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 just the way that I am. Um, instead, what I do is just because I don't laugh or I don't crack jokes every few minutes doesn't mean that I don't do other things, you know, other things that might be entertaining. And my my expertise, my expertise isn't comedy. It isn't. I'm not a comedian. My expertise is explaining things. I think that I'm relatively good at explaining things. And so whenever I play something, whenever I do a playthrough of it, if I'm doing a playthrough of the GTA games, what people like when my playthroughs is they like I dress up as the characters, but they also like my commentary. And even though I'm not making jokes constantly, I'm explaining stuff in the story. So for people that get confused why certain things happen in the story, I explain it. That's why my lore videos got really popular, because I explained certain things that people were confused about, like why Salvatore betrays Claude. That actually, that video became very popular. So it's, uh, I, I explained, I'm playing through the game, I explained the lore, the backstory, and I also explained real life stuff. Like when I'm talking about the Italian Mafia, I, like I said, I finished law enforcement in school, so I, I know about a lot of this stuff. I talk about the Italian Mafia, I talk about the triads, I talk about stuff like that, how it happens. And so I talk about like whether GTA is realistic and its depiction of certain things and stuff like that, and I'm going through like these games. And people really like that, people really enjoy it. And for the people that say I don't laugh, the most that I've actually ever laughed is on my Ace Attorney playthroughs. If you've watched my great Ace Attorney playthroughs, that's when I've laughed the most, was on my Ace Attorney playthroughs. And on my Ace Attorney playthroughs, what I'll say about that is that the reason I laughed at my Ace Attorney playthroughs is because Ace Attorney is a game where you play as a lawyer. You're, you're a Japanese lawyer, but you're in Victorian um, uh, Britain as a student. 
and so you're defending people who have been wrongly accused, and when I'm playing for that game, I explain what's realistic in a trial, what's unrealistic, and some of the stuff that happens during those trials is, like, really ridiculous and actually did make me laugh. Um, so I was explaining that, but my Ace Attorney series wasn't as popular, so that's, that's the point that I'm making, is that, you know, people should be willing to give other things a chance. If you want to see me laugh, there's plenty of content that I laugh in. It's just maybe not the content that you've been necessarily watching, but that's ultimately why I don't laugh, why I don't crack jokes. It's not my personality. It's not who I am. My, per my expertise, like I said, is explaining things and explaining how things work, explaining the backstory behind things. And when I play historical games, like one thing that I'm really good at is history. Like I'm, a, I'm especially re really good at, I'm really good at modern history, really good at like World War II history, World War I history, Revolutionary War, French Revolution. I know those time periods really well. And so when I play like a historical game in these periods, like I'm playing the saboteur right now, I can talk history a lot during these playthroughs. And so people really appreciate that. They really like that I talk history and I explain things like that. So that's that's ultimately like, you know, my personality. That's why I don't I don't laugh. My expertise is, you know, explaining things and that's just who I am. I'm not gonna, you know, laugh or pretend to be somebody that I'm not, but that's just it. But you know, ultimately like, you know, wrapping this video up, um, you know, that's how my channel got started, is I got popular in GTA. I know this is probably approaching an hour long, but I recorded, you know, this whole thing without a script. There was just, you know, one part in the middle that I took a little break in that you guys saw, but I recorded this whole thing without a script, you know, basically just talking to you guys, just straight from my heart, explaining everything, and I got popular on the GTA Online content. I grew a lot on that, and I'm really grateful to everyone who is supporting me. Everyone. And I got popular in the GTA content, but I didn't want to just be trapped in just GTA Online, and I wanted to try other things, because ultimately what I think is going to happen is I think that I think that if you base your channel on like one game, I think that's you know that's gonna hurt your channel in the long run because what's gonna happen when GTA Online has no content anymore? Because it's gonna happen. The game is not gonna have any more updates anymore. So like, what are a lot of YouTubers gonna do really at that point anymore? So that's just I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm not trying to. Just don't get don't get me wrong on that. Um, but I'm just saying in my personal opinion that I've been preparing for this for years. Because I know that GTA Online is eventually going to announce its final update. It's eventually going to happen. People think it's not going to happen, but it's eventually going to happen. And, you know, if you base your entire... If you start expanding now and you try to do other content, you know, your channel is going to be in a much better position than if you just do GTA Online content and then one day Rockstar announces that they're pulling the plug, not because they're canceling the servers or something like that, but because there's not going to be more content like Red Dead Online. Like, Rockstar could just say, pull the plug on content like they did for Red Dead Online. And that's gonna um uh and that's gonna really affect channels that only base their content on like a game like just GTA or you know you know a game that's just you know another game that just might be similar like something else like you know look look at like Reddit Online like you know a lot of Reddit Online content creators struggled when like um uh, when Rockstar didn't say that there was gonna be any more content um coming out for the game so that's ultimately why I think that it's important to expand your channel and to try to think people want to do what they want to do on their channel if people enjoy doing just one particular type of content if they only enjoy doing one game. That's their choice. They really do like doing that. I'm happy for them. But I'm just explaining my personal perspective and my opinion on what I think of the matter. And, you know, wrapping this video up, people are probably going to... A few things that I didn't cover earlier, but, you know, what ended up happening was in um, May of 2019, I graduated. And then in September of, um, September of 2019, I quit my retail job. And um, uh, when I quit my retail job, uh, what, I'll, what I'll say about that is um, uh, my boss took it well. You know, he wasn't like, you know, you know, sour towards me or angry or anything like that. He was actually cool. This is the second boss that I had. The second boss actually a nice guy. He always tried to do right by his workers, um, but his hands were tied because corporate. Um, but he took it well. He was fine. He wished me good luck on everything like that. And, um, and you know, I, I but a lot of other people that I worked with were kind of shocked that I had quit because I had been working there for six years. And so I just, I just quit. I put my two weeks in. I didn't want to be like, you know, a scumbag and just like walk out. I don't do that. I, I, there was a lot of people that I respected there still. And so I wanted to give my two weeks in just so that they could still find somebody. After two weeks, I was just quit. And honestly speaking, guys, I tell you this, you know, some people might laugh at me for this, but even though I've been working at that job for six years and even though in 2019, I was making much more on YouTube than I was in the retail job, much more. But even though I was making much more on YouTube than the retail job, I was still scared to quit the retail job. I was scared um, uh, because I had worked there for so long. I'd been there for six years. And so I was just scared. I was like, you know, what's going to happen when I quit? I I'm, I'm going to be doing YouTube mainly, but I quit and nothing really happened. Like, you know, it was just, I was actually happy. I was relieved. I was relieved I didn't have to do truck nights anymore. I was relieved that I didn't have to deal with the screaming customers, the Karens who would just yell and curse me out for dumb things and their coupons. So it, it actually put me in a much better mood and improved my mental health. And 
my mental health did get improved greatly when I uh, when I started expanding my content and playing other other things. But that's basically like you know the summary of my channel and um uh, and you know and what happened. And you know now if you're wondering you know how I am now, my mental state and everything like that, you know I'm in a much better state. You know um, I'm also running a side business which I've talked about on my streams um uh, you know before. But it's like, you know, I, um, uh, I'm i in a much better state. You know, I moved to a, you know, a new place, moved to the Midwest. Right now I'm in New York, still visiting family for the holidays, but I'm going to return soon. And I'm just in a much better state. I'm just happy. I enjoy what I do. Like, I um, I had gone to uh, North Dakota, actually, like a, um, a few weeks ago. And so you guys might remember that North Yankton video that I made. And that was the, I'll tell you guys, the North Yankton video that I made, that was the hardest video. The hardest video in all of 2022, 100%. It was the hardest video of the year, definitely. Um, and the reason that that video was so hard to make, it wasn't even the cold. I don't care about the cold or anything like that. It doesn't, doesn't bother me that much. But it was just that it was the driving. The driving, it was a bit a bit of a drive. It was a few hours drive. Um, it was that I, I took booked the hotel. I went all over the city. So, like, when I did the New York videos, the New York videos were generally easy to do because they were, like, you know, just a, one specific place. But there I had to explore, like, a whole region. And so it was, like, the whole day. Like, I spent, like, you know, I probably spent, like, you know, I spent, like, I would say five or six hours driving back and forth, spent in a hotel for the day, and I had, you know, I had spent, like, I'd say, how long? I was... I started recording around 7, I, I, well, I woke up at 7 a.m., started recording my hotel at 7 a.m., and then I kind of left at, like, 2 p.m., so I was kind of tra riding, driving around the city for seven hours to different spots, um, so that was, um, that was it, and even though, um, even though that video was so hard to make, you know, the video is around fi close to 50,000 views right now, I think it'll approach 100,000 views, I never did that video for, for views, really, um, I did that video because I, I have a lot of subscribers that I know respect me and like me as a content creator, and I wanted to do something for them to show them something interesting, something cool, and one of the reasons I, I ended up doing that video was because there's all these people that do videos on New York, Liberty City in real life, Los Angeles, Los Angeles in real life, but no one did North Yankton in real life, which North Yankton is a real place, North Dakota. And so I thought that I would, I thought that I would show the, the real life location, what it looks like. I'll have the video linked uh, uh, down below if you guys want to check it out. But that was basically that. It was, um, it was, uh, it was, it was, um, it was that video. I made that video because I wanted to show people what this area looks like. I wanted to sh break some stereotypes that people might have about the area. People, people that might think that it's like people, people that might think that it's like a, um, a, like a boring place or something like that. I hope that that video had broken those stereotypes. But that was to me. Uh, it was it was ultimately a video that I wanted to make because I was passionate about. It wasn't. I wasn't looking at views when I made the video. I wasn't obsessioning over how much views this is gonna get. I was just thinking like this is a video that I want to do. This is a project that I want to do. This is a project that I really want to um, you know put some effort into and really make an amazing video and something that I can be really proud of, and that's ultimately what I did, so that's, um, that's that, you know, years later, I'm in a much happier state, you know, I might, I'm not depressed or anything, you know, my mental health has greatly improved, and I generally do what I want to do, and, you know, as for the toxic people, you know, the people that were harassing me and, like, you know, threatening to unsubscribe from me, I don't have as much viewers as I did in the past, that is true, like, people, people tell me that I've killed my channel, no, it's not true, I don't have as much views as I, as I did in the past, that is true, I took a massive hit on views, and a massive hit on subscribers, but even though I took that massive hit, I'll tell you guys, I never regretted it, not once. I don't. Um, uh, I like GT Online. I still do GT Online content, and I'm really back into it, and I want to make more GT Online content. But at that time, the people that were complaining to me and the people that were being nasty to me, they just didn't understand my position. They didn't understand the things that I was going through. They didn't understand that I just wanted to play other games and do other content. If you play only one game constantly and do only one game, nothing but one game, you'll go crazy. So the same people that were, you know, complaining to me, I... I highly doubt that they were only playing GT Online in their spare time and no other game. They were definitely playing other games too. So they didn't understand my position. But I took a massive hit in my subscribers and my viewers. But even though I took that massive hit, I didn't regret it. Because I had gotten subscribers from other content and uh, viewers from other content. And so over time, my channel grew and I hit a million subscribers. And, and when I first started expanding my channel to other content, like when I really took that break, I was around 800,000 subscribers. Now I'm at over a million fifty thousand, so I get an extra 250,000 subscribers even when I pulled my channel like away from mostly GTA Online content. So there were people that were telling me that I was going to fail, but I'm still here and I'm still growing. Not growing as much as I used to, sure, with the, G the GTA content, GTA Online content, but I'm happy with the state that I'm in. I mean, I, and I appreciate every view, every view. So I, I want to thank everybody for the support. It has helped me a lot. I don't really see those comments much anymore. Those comments of being nasty to me, you know, fr you know, threatening to unsubscribe. I don't really see them much anymore. Um, they're very rare. 
they're, I almost never see them anymore. And, and the reason that I think I never see them anymore is because the people that were threatening to unsubscribe from me when I started doing other content, I think that, I think that they either unsubscribed um, or they accepted that I was gonna, um, uh, that I wasn't gonna change, and they just kept watching my content. It was either one of those two, because I just rare, rarely see those negative comments anymore. But that's pretty much it for this video. I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart for the support on YouTube, because even though I, even though I've had some ups and downs of, with YouTube, I've had some times where I was happy, sometimes that I was unhappy. I ultimately appreciate the support and the success that I have gotten on YouTube, and I'm just gonna say I'm in a much better state than where I was years ago, and this is what I want to do. I want to do like you know. Um, uh, I want to do YouTube. This is this is this is ultimately what I want to do. This is what I enjoy doing. This is my passion. This is this is what I'm happy with doing. Um, uh, and this is where I think my career is going to take me. This is something that I'm good at. Something that I like doing. And it's you know it's it's like my dream. I like being able to like you know choose a playthrough, playing playing whatever game that I that I want to play. You know, dressing up as the characters. I think it's fun, and I really do enjoy it. And I love making these lore videos for you guys. These guides. These streams. Um, Oh and um uh oh and one final thing that I forgot to mention since this, I guess this is something that that I, I was gonna mention anyways but um uh, pe people are probably gonna ask me which is um uh, how did you become so su successful streaming YouTube how did you become so successful in live streaming um now my live streams do pretty well for the most part even if I'm not playing GTA the GTA streams are always the most popular but even if I play other games like Red Dead Online like you know they they'll they'll do well even if I play Modern Warfare two they still do well. Um, uh, so for people wondering, how do my streams do so well, um, uh, regardless of the game that I play? And the, the answer is simple. The answer on why my streams do, uh, do so well is because I, even though I don't, I'm not, I don't know if you would call me funny or not, I, like I said, I'm not a comedian, but even though I don't crack jokes constantly, the reason that a lot of people show up to my streams and like my streams is because I do one simple thing. And do you know what that one simple thing that I do is? Do you know what it is? That one simple thing that I do is that I read comments and I reply to the comments and I interact with the chat and I tell stories. That's 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 ultimately it. That is that is ultimately the key to my success when it comes to streaming. Is that it's that simple. Is to reply to comments, read comments because when you have a big when you have a viewership, it, it, at, at first it's hard. When you start building viewers and you start pe having people show up to your streams, if you reply to their comments and you actually read their comments live, people really appreciate that and people really like that. And so people are more willing to watch your your streams. And interact with, with your streams if you're gonna interact with them back if you're gonna reply to them that's what people like about my streams like when I play reddit online for instance a lot of the people that come to my reddit online streams don't even play reddit online like I've seen people admit to it they don't even play reddit online but they come to the reddit online streams because they like me as a person and they like that I reply to comments I'll reply to comments I'll tell stories I'll explain things and stuff like that and so people like that that I reply to people so it's um that's it. There's so many YouTubers out there where they don't even bother replying to their to their stream chat. They don't. They just ignore the stream chat. They just they they sometimes they don't even read super chats, which that's disgusting. That that really is. That if somebody gives you a donation, at least read their donation. At least read their read their super chat. They're giving you money. And um it it, it personally infuri infuriates me when I see these like these scumbag YouTubers out there because in the in in the time that I've streamed YouTube because I've streamed YouTube for over 5 years now in the time that I've streamed YouTube I have never once in those 5 years never once asked for a donation never once the only time that I have ever asked for a donation guys the only time I ever asked for it is I've asked for a donation only on charity streams only on them and that's because they're going to charities that's it and I donate and when I do the charity streams I always donate hundreds of my own dollars live so that, that's it. I've never asked for a personal donation myself, and I never will. And I see these scumbag YouTubers and these Twitch streamers. The Twitch streamers are personally the worst when it comes to this. But I see these scumbag YouTubers and these Twitch streamers, and they say like, oh, they say like, oh, you guys have to give me donations, blah, blah, blah. And they'll say, they'll say, oh, you guys get free content, so you have to give me donations. I'll tell you this right now. The people that watch your content, even if they're not giving you donations, they're not watching for free. And the reason that I say that is because even if somebody is regularly watching your streams, even if they're not, even if they are not um, uh, giving you a donation, they are watching ads on your streams, and that is generating revenue for you. The same when they watch your videos. When they watch your videos, that's not free content. They're watching ads in your videos, and those ads help you generate revenue. 
and that that helps out that helps your channel grow and most youtubers most of their money comes from the adsense revenue that's where most of their money comes from so when i see when i see these scumbag youtubers and these scumbag twitch streamers and they just attack their audience and they're so disrespectful to their audience and they say like yo give me donations and stuff like that no one has an obligation to give you a donation you're, 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 it, they don't they give you a donation only when they like your content and they feel like you truly deserved it then they'll give you a donation but they're not gonna don't don't ask for a donation because it's a scummy thing to do no one has an obligation to give you a donation but it's like i said i cannot stand entitled people that's who i don't don't like I, I cannot stand entitlement i can't stand arrogance i can't stand when selfishness and so it's just that's it it's arrogance it's just you know it's arrogance it's you know demanding stuff from others you know claiming that they're getting free content when they're not but that that's that's what i have to say about the donations is you know if you want to be successful on youtube when it comes to streaming i know it's going to be hard it's going to be a long road but that's what I found to be the most successful thing is to always read comments, read comments and be respectful. Be a nice guy. You know, that's just it. Be a decent human being. That's all you got to do is, just, you know, don't be a scumbag and people will like you and they'll come back and they'll watch your content. It's as simple as that. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't know how to be a decent human being and they're, they like being scumbags. But um, that, that's, that's pretty much my view on that. Um, so I want to thank everybody for your support, um, you know, wrapping this video up. I know I said a lot. I've been speaking for an hour, but like I said, I didn't use any script for this. This is all from the, uh, you know, bottom of my heart. Just me talking about my channel, things, things that I've gone through, like some, some, some of the mental health that I, you know, had, you know, work and, you know, some of the costal comments that I dealt with, but in a much better state. I don't, not in that job anymore. And I'm happy that I'm able to do what I want to do now. I don't really have much of those toxic comments and I'm very grateful. And what I'll say about this is even when I was dealing with the toxicity on YouTube, that was still much better than like, um, uh, you know, when I used to work in retail. So I'm much grateful, I'm very grateful for, you know, the support that I've had on YouTube and I'm in a much better state now. And, um, oh, and, um, I guess final thing, cause I keep, I keep always saying final thing, but something that keeps crossing my mind is, um, uh, why I didn't end up becoming a police officer, even though I had finished, you know, law enforcement tech. The reason I didn't end up becoming a police officer is because I didn't feel like it was worth it anymore. I, I, I personally didn't. Um, it was because I, um, uh, it was, how do I explain this? It was that I had, I had eventually wanted to possibly work my way up to be a detective. And I wanted to be a detective because, uh, because not, be detectives oftentimes don't make great pay. I'm just letting everybody know. It depends on the state. Like some states pay in my country, some states pay police better than other states. But I wanted to be a detective, but not because, not because of the pay, even though the pay was terrible. I wanted to be a detective because I wanted to, like, stop some of these evil people. Like, when I was in school and I read about some of these cases, some of these horrible, like, you know, evil human beings, and they do such horrible things. Like, one of the dumbest things I ever learned about in philosophy was, I remember in philosophy, my teacher once suggested that there's no such thing as evil, and that evil is just a social, like, creation of humans. No, there isn't e evil in this world. And when I read about some of these cases, and I read about some of these evil, horrible people, and the horrible things they do to other people, how they just take advantage of other people, they murder people, just the horrible things that they do to other people, and they have no remorse and everything like that. I wanted to be a detective because I wanted to stop these people. I wanted to put these bad, evil people in prison so that they couldn't hurt anybody else. That's ultimately why I wanted to be a detective, because I wanted to, you know, do something to, like, you know, help others, and I wanted to, like, you know, stop these evil people. That was ultimately what it was about. But at the same time is, you know, being a cop and being a detective is a very, very hard job. Like, um, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's personally one of the most underappreciated jobs. It's like, imagine getting woken up at four or five o'clock in the morning telling you that you have to go to like the scene of a crime, possibly even a murder. So you gotta wake up a few hours of sleep, go to the scene of a murder, see like a dead body. And, uh, and then, you know, and then, you, you know, work through the night, you don't really see your family, which is, that's also one of the reasons that police actually have, especially detectives that have a very high divorce rate is per actually specifically because of that, because they, they're, they're not around a lot of times. And so, you know, you not only, you see a lot of dead people, but you also see like, you deal with the worst people, you deal with psychopaths, you deal with sociopaths, you deal with people, you have to interview these people and talk to these people. They're just such horrible people, like feel, they feel no remorse, they'll laugh about the horrible things they'll do, they'll be proud of the horrible things that they did. And you know, that takes a, the men a strain on your mental health. But it's ultimately like, you know, what I do on YouTube it, right now is, you know, it's safe. You know, I'm not going to get hurt or anything like that, and I don't have to deal with psychopaths, and I don't have to deal with sociopaths, I don't have to deal with these, you know, evil people. I did ultimately want to do that, but, you know, I'm in a much better state now, and it's just, and I'm just happy, I'm very happy with what I want to do, and, like, why would I want to, you know, 
you know, burn myself out and even, even more, and, like, cause myself unnecessary stress and just, you know, and do all of that. And, and another reason why I, I didn't end up becoming a police officer, and I just want to be clear, I have massive respect for people, law enforcement, I do. Uh, I have a lot of respect for people in law enforcement. I support law enforcement totally. Um, you know, one of my best friends that I grew up with, he, um, uh, he, he, um, he went to school also in New York. Um, one of my childhood friends, he wanted to be a cop. Also, he ended up becoming a state trooper in Maine. Um, so I have a lot of respect for the police, but what I will say also is that I understand that there's bad cops out there. I fully get that. I know there's like, you know, bad and racist cops. They shouldn't be police officers and they should be either in prison or, or they should be fired depending on what they did. I don't deny that. I don't dispute that. I know there's bad cops out there, but the reality is the vast majority of the police are good people. They're good people just like me. I mean, I wasn't a cop, but people that just wanted to help their community and just, you know, want to make a difference like my friend. So it's just, they're not, you know, these, you know, evil people that you see in the media where the media is making you seem like all the police officers are just bad people or something like that. And that's one of the other reasons why I didn't want to become a police officer. It was because I personally felt like, I felt like a lot of the public does not have that much respect for police officers anymore. Like I said, I don't deny the bad cops out there, but the vast majority of cops are good people and they're suffering unnecessary abuse from people a lot of times too. I don't deny there's cases of police brutality or that, you know, there's bad cops that do horrible things. And I, when I see that happen, I get really pissed off because I can't stand abuse of police powers. And I think, you know, I can't stand corrupt cops. I think, I, I honestly think that corrupt cops are even worse than some of the gangsters a lot of times. So it's just, you know, like, they, they should suffer the full penalty of the law. But when I see these, like, cops that haven't done anything wrong and I see them getting harassed and, like, cursed out, I see these, like, videos on YouTube where, like, a cop will, like, go to, like, a... They'll go to like um a, a you know place to get coffee and they'll tell them no we don't serve cops here that actually happens you can look that up and and then I see like this video in like my hometown in New York where I grew up I see this video of like people just like throwing water on like cops like buckets of water just dunking on their heads the cops didn't do anything wrong in that case and they're just dunking water on their on their heads just for being cops and the cops act, I think actually handled that situation pretty well where they just, they just walked away they could have possibly arrested those people they could have you dump water on somebody you couldn't arrest somebody for that. But the cops didn't. They just walked away, and I think they personally did the right thing on that. And the crowd looked stupid in that situation. But, you know, dealing with something like that, personally, where I have to deal with, like, psychopaths and sociopaths, and I possibly see, like, dead people, and then, like, and then like you know, also having little respect from, like, people around me. And, like, I know people in the community would probably, most people would probably be positive, but then dealing with other abuse from other people, like, thinking that you're a bad person just because you're a police officer when you just want to help your community, it's just, um you know, that, um you know, I... I I hate racist cops, I hate corrupt cops, but it's like I said, most people are just good people that just want to help, and that's another reason why they want to become a police officer, because I just feel like it's just, it's just too much stress on, uh, it'll be just too much stress dealing with all the, not just the crimes and the horrible evil people that you have to deal with, but just the, the abuse that you can also suffer, and just the little respect that, that you can have um, um, from a lot of people around you. Because when I was growing up, I've never seen this, this type of, you know, personal hatred for the police, it was, it was very different. But I guess that's just, uh, that's just, you know, my view on it. That's just my opinion. That's just personally what I think about it. But, um, you know, that's, this is pretty much it. Um, uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I will be, um, I'll be wrapping up the video here. Um, thank you guys for watching, and thank you guys, everyone, for the support. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know this video was very long, but there's a lot of things I want to talk about. My mental health, you know, the, uh, my job, you know, what my education, you know, my background, things that I, things that I dealt with. And I hope that this video has made a lot of sense to people and, you know, explained my, background so people can understand me a little bit more so thank you guys for watching i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did do drop a like and i'll see you in the next one take care everyone and again have a happy new year take care everyone